If you're a new Christian, first let me say congratulations. You have secured your destiny. You are now a new creation and have been freely given eternal life by God himself. You have stepped out of the devil's world and into God's kingdom. Have confidence in your salvation. It is a gift from God Almighty. Jesus said in Luke 15.10, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You have repented, which means you have changed your mind about Jesus Christ and believed in him for your eternal salvation. You are important to Jesus, and the heavenly angels were filled with joy when you came to him. Your name is now written in the book of life. Your sins have been washed clean. Your past, present, and future sins are remembered no more. In God's sight, you are now white as snow. You have been sealed by God through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. This means that God now lives in you. You have been made complete. God has purchased you for eternity at the highest price ever paid with the shed blood of Christ. Your journey to this point has been your own unique experience as we are all different people with different paths in life. No two salvation experiences are identical. Now, Jesus wants a personal relationship with you, and that is a blessed thing. I'll give you some direction now to get you started on your journey. Get yourself a Bible and begin reading Matthew. I strongly suggest not starting at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis. The Old Testament leads up to Jesus Christ. Jesus makes his first appearance in Matthew, and that is the best starting point. It's where I began reading after I got saved 38 years ago. Once you are finished Matthew, continue reading from there with Mark, Luke, John, etc. If you can't resist looking at the Old Testament in the beginning of your walk with Christ, I suggest reading Psalms or Proverbs. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all Jesus' life story and are accounts from four different men. Reading all four of these Gospels will give you a better understanding about Jesus' life, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. It will help you to understand more about who God is, and you are going to love Jesus. He is amazing. The Bible is the Word of God, and hearing the Word of God is what led you to salvation. It is pure truth, which is a very refreshing thing. Reading the Bible for yourself will also educate you and enlighten you about Jesus. It will broaden your understanding and you will be able to measure things against the truth of God's Word. The more you read the Bible, the deeper your understanding will become and the more you will mature in your walk with Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Reading the Bible for yourself is important. Listening to a sound preacher's sermon is a very good thing, but learning for yourself is far more valuable. God's Word is living and powerful, and God will be with you every step of the way on your journey towards Him in eternity. Jesus wants a personal relationship with you. And what is one of the key things in any relationship? Conversation. And in this case, prayer. Your prayer life is something that is essential for your spiritual growth and your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can be yourself with him. He already knows you better than you know yourself anyways, because God created your blueprints. Just speak to him as you are. He is listening. And just so you know, you don't always have to get on your knees to pray. I pray while walking, driving, cutting the grass, sitting on the couch, etc. Speak to God whenever you want. He's open 24-7, 365 days a year. He will never grow tired of your prayers. And God will answer your prayers. He will answer you in ways that only you may understand. Remember, it's a personal relationship, and He will make it personal. While you pray, believe your prayer will be answered. Have faith in him. Jesus said in Mark 11:24, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Belief and faith are a couple of the key themes of Jesus' ministry, 
and they're pretty much the same thing. Belief that Jesus will answer you is faith. The Apostle Paul wrote in Hebrews 11:6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You will learn over time how God will speak to you. Oftentimes it's that little voice of reason that whispers in the back of your mind. Remember, his Holy Spirit now lives in you. He will guide you. There are many ways that God will speak to you. I knew a guy once that saw a magazine cover and it was just the way he looked at it and something clicked for him. It could be something someone says or it could be that God leads you to a particular verse in the Bible. There are so many ways, too many to number. It's a remarkable thing that you have been made alive spiritually by Jesus Christ. You were once lost, but now you have been found. Baptism is an outward demonstration to the world that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Although baptism isn't an absolute must for salvation, remember that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and Jesus led us by example. When Jesus requested that John baptize him, Matthew 3, 14 and 15, and John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Jesus was baptized and demonstrated what we should do. He made it so simple for us and crystal clear. This apparently surprised John that he was to baptize the Messiah. And he thought Jesus, God in the flesh, should be baptizing him, not the other way around. However, our Savior is very humble, a true gentleman, and he demonstrated with his life how to walk in life flawlessly. And only Jesus could do it flawlessly, as God is perfection. People get baptized in many different places, churches, bathtubs, lakes, rivers, swimming pools, etc., the Apostle Philip baptized a man from Ethiopia in the Bible in a body of water while traveling with him. John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. If there's water, you can be baptized. Now, if you have been christened or baptized as a baby, it doesn't count as baptism. A baby cannot make the conscious choice to believe in Jesus Christ. Infant baptism is a man-made ceremony, and it's not biblical. And Catholics are famous for this. Baptism comes after belief. As a note of caution, if a particular church you are considering does not offer water baptism, then you may want to avoid that church. You should also avoid any church that contradicts the truth that you have read in the Bible, and definitely avoid any church that makes salvation unclear, complicated, or difficult. Once you are purchased by Jesus Christ, he holds your ownership papers, and you belong to him forever. Choosing a church is a personal thing, and it is up to you to pray and allow God to lead you to one, if you haven't already found one. I will not mention any denominations, as churches can vary from preacher to preacher, but I do stand strongly against the prosperity gospel. Please don't go there. Once you read the Bible more, you will be able to start making distinctions for yourself about any particular church's teachings. If a church doesn't feel right, move on. Don't stop your own reading and studying of God's Word. There is so much waiting to be discovered. James 4.8 Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. This verse spells out how our approach to the Lord should be on a daily basis. Proverbs 8.17 I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Remember, this is a personal relationship between you and God himself. I hope this has helped you in your new journey towards heaven, and be excited about this. One glorious day you will be with Jesus Christ in paradise, and we will all see you there. Welcome to the family.